Lately, it's become clear that not only in hardware, but in software as well, things are not looking up for Volkswagen or for its CEO, Herbert Diess. As it turns out, software is hard. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I want to talk about two different articles that came out on the 7th of June, so just a few days ago. I know I've been delayed. There's been a lot of other topics that have come up recently and that have gotten in the way of that. But anyway, I really wanted to do this episode. First, however, I want to talk really briefly about the fact that Tesla is now delivering Austin made model Ys, and it's possible that they might only have 50 kilowatt hour battery packs and still be getting around 270, 280 miles of range. So that's very impressive if that's the case. The reason why people think this is because the model number is 50D and the older models, the model S's that were like the 85D and the 100D and stuff were the kilowatt hours of the battery pack. So if that holds true, the 50D actually only has 50 kilowatt hours of batteries. And if they're getting that kind of range, close to 300 miles out of 50 kilowatt hours of battery pack that is really remarkable and that would mean that the 4680s are not only going to be kind of a replacement for the current 2170s but are going to be substantially better so all of that is really really fascinating news of course if these rumors get substantiated a little bit more i'll have to do an episode all about that particularly but in the meantime i want to talk about some much less exciting much more depressing news and that's how bad things are at volkswagen all right so there's a lot to get through here. There's two different articles. I want to talk about the Handelsblatt article first because it's a little bit shorter. The other article gets into a lot more detail. But anyway, you can see the Cariad, which is, I believe, Car I Am Digital, but also has something to do with like heart, like cardiac kind of things, I think. I think that's how it all works. Anyway, more chaos than coordinated programming is a pretty bad title for this. You know, doesn't bode well for Volkswagen's uh, software efforts if they've got more chaos than coordinated programming. If you don't know, there's somewhere around 5,000 people on this project. That is a remarkably large number of people to be working on a software project. Obviously, all of those are not going to be engineers working on it, which again, according to Elon Musk, would be a problem in its own right. But, you know, 5,000 people is its kind of like herding cats. Very difficult to keep control of all of that. All right, so let's read about what's going on. So currently, most Volkswagen cars run with software version E1.1. Thousands of developers have been working on version E2.0 since 2020, which should allow the automated driving by 2025. Many programmers were borrowed from the subsidiaries Audi and Porsche in order to bring as much impact as possible to the project. But five years is a long time in a group that is in competition with the constantly innovative U.S. manufacturer Tesla. So it's interesting that even just a couple of years ago, people were poo-pooing Tesla and saying that they weren't worth, you know, anything software or hardware wise. And now they are the competition. Now they're the big fish in the pond. Anyway, continuing on, it becomes obvious that the really big problem at first is going to be the luxury brands, Porsche and Audi, that are part of the Volkswagen group. And that's because these vehicles are going to be manufactured and put on the roads before a lot of the more mass market VW cars. So as it says, both Porsche and Audi are waiting for the new software from Cariad, and this is where a really big problem starts to occur. According to the group, Audi boss Markus Doismann and Porsche leader Oliver Blume were not satisfied with the schedule. They did not consider the current E1.1 software to be competitive with Tesla, but they did not want to wait until 2025 either. Blume and Doismann therefore insisted on an intermediate level called E1.2. It was supposed to be finished by the end of 2021, but it wasn't. And next we see what happens when there's a scramble for resources. Instead, a scramble for resources began. Cariad developers working on E2.0 were pulled for the E1.2 release. Audi and Porsche are now hoping that the interim version will be ready in 2024, three years behind schedule. The catch is that there now are no developers for software version E2.0. So here we see the problem. We have people who are like, oh, we're dissatisfied with waiting until the you know real version of the software comes out. Make us an interim version. Well, it turns out this interim version has turned into an entire version on its own. And thus, VW has now taken all of the resources it was supposed to be putting into this completely new version of software and put it into this weird hybrid interim version instead. That is not a recipe for success. 
And now continuing on, insiders report this is just the beginning of the problems. Not only did Audi, Porsche, and VW compete for programmers, there aren't even any synergies between the two software versions. Tens of thousands of hours of work that go into one version are lost in the other. A Karyat spokesman confirmed to the Handelsblatt, the versions E1.2 and E2.0 will run completely separately from each other permanently. So that means there's going to be no compatibility between these two software versions, which also means if you buy a Porsche or an Audi with 1.2 in it and 2.0 does eventually come out, there's no way you're going to be up able to upgrade that software. So this is just really, really disastrous. Deciding to change tracks in the middle of working on 2.0 and deciding to go back and make 1.2 was a disastrous, disastrous decision from the beginning. So anyway, 1.2, 2.0, completely incompatible on a hardware as well as software level. Inside report that the E1.2 version for luxury brands Audi and Porsche will be ready earlier, but is inferior to the E2.0 version for Volkswagen customers. For example, fully automated driving on the freeway is not possible with E1.2. Holy crap. The infotainment functions are also limited compared to the E2.0 version. Will the buyers of a Porsche Macan or Audi e-tron accept the fact that the software quality is inferior to that of the drivers of a future mass market VW model? Many in the group are already thrown throwing up their hands over their heads because of the misery that has been laid out for years to come. So a slightly awkward English translation from the German, but you get the basic idea. So essentially we've got luxury brand vehicles that are gonna get a kind of intermediate, weird hybrid, you know, stepchild of a piece of software that's not gonna be able to do autonomous driving when it comes out, which is insanity. And then it's going to be inferior to Volkswagen vehicles that are produced hopefully within the next year or two after that with the version 2.0 software. So this was just a complete disaster from the get-go, obviously. And then we get to the ultimatum, which is that Dies versus Deutschmann, there's a dispute over the software, obviously. It alarms the supervisory board and they've set an ultimatum for July. So as this article said, this has been so bad for so long that Dies directly took over responsibility for the software at the beginning of 2022. So as you can see here, they put in 6 billion euros on this project, but it's mainly producing trouble rather than software at this point. Not a good sign. After a recap of the Handelsblatt article, it says, at the beginning of the year, Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dies took over responsibility from Cariad from Audi CEO Markus Doismann. Today, both blame each other for the problems. Porsche CEO Oliver Blume is also upset as the controversial software does not fit into the success story for the sports car manufacturer's planned IPO. Now the supervisory board is intervening. According to Handelsblatt reports, Dies has three weeks to present possible solutions. Group sales at the VW Group will soon have to explain to customers that new flagship models like the electric Porsche Macan and Audi's Artemis e-sedan could be delayed by up to two years because of the Cariad mess. At the same time, U.S. competitor Tesla is pulling away with more and more new innovations. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, right? Not only is Volkswagen falling behind, but Tesla is pulling ahead in terms of software as well as hardware developments. And they don't really mention this in this article, but so are Chinese auto manufacturers. Chinese manufacturers like BYD and others are producing really, really compelling hardware and software in their vehicles. And Volkswagen is losing a huge amount of share in China already. But when these cars start to be exported to the rest of the world, VW could lose massive, massive market share globally to Chinese brands as well as to Tesla. So this is really, really critical. I mean, it's kind of interesting that Cariad sounds like a heart, but it also sounds like they're on life support at this point. Not a good situation for the VW group to be in overall. We get a really interesting quote from Dees down below. He says, in the past, we supplied our suppliers with the programs and then didn't intervene. They ran for 10 or 15 years. That means on the vehicle. So they would have a decade or a decade and a half that the same software would run on the vehicles. Today, he said, the software has to be adapted on an ongoing basis to the vehicle model, to the customer, to the environment. Constant updating, like with a smartphone, Dees explained. Software is simply part of the product today. You can't delegate it. So it's pretty fascinating to think about the fact that we're moving from a very, very old school software idea, almost like, you know, doing spacecraft or something. You just design these things to be hardened and to be perfect and you spend a ton of money and then you amortize the cost of developing that software over a decade plus. That's not the way things work anymore. Now, you know, and Tesla has been very much in the lead about this. And then you can also see Chinese companies doing the same thing. Like I said, this very, very agile software development to go along with agile hardware development allows the software to be 
updated constantly, you know, every few weeks or months or something, rather than running in the car for a decade plus. So you have to make the software cheap to develop, cheap to upgrade, and cheap to deploy. All of these things are very, very, you know, counter to the way all of legacy automobiles have been manufactured up to this point. Continuing on, however, the software subsidiary, which was launched with billions of euros, again, about 6 billion euros, suffers from several birth defects. That's their language, not mine. Its developers are working in parallel on three software solutions, one of which is not compatible with the other two. A look into VW's future signals duplicate structures, duplicate work, and billions in additional costs. All of this stuff is things you can't do. You've got to make software agile. You've got to make it quick. You've got to make it inexpensive, relatively speaking, to make changes to and to upgrade. You just can't do this kind of thing and expect to survive in today's world. Continuing on, quote, actually the group's board members, Dies, Deussmann, and Bluma, should sit down in a room together and all be held jointly responsible, a Karyad insider tells Handelsblatt. All three have a share in the current situation. And this is an interesting sentence. The failed software rollout, they say, is a problem, but even more a symptom. It means, you know, it's the whole structure of VW is broken, and this is just a symptom of that. So, you know, it's like when you see something presenting physically in a disease, oftentimes the underlying cause of the problem is something much deeper and much more profound. And here you can see the deeper root causes, right? In December of 2021, VW's supervisory board decided to increase the size of the board from 8 to 12 members. And it goes on to talk about how this was to rein Dees in and to keep him from having as much authority as he used to have over the VW group. And a lot of this had to do with the fact that Dees had thought about firing as many as 30,000 people, the majority of them at the Wolfsburg plant, and he didn't consult the supervisory board before laying out these plans. And then it says the new board members around Dees took competencies away from him. In other words, they took a lot of his power. And then they talk about Dies versus Deussmann and how they used to be friends, but now they're enemies and how that's not working very well. And it ends up by talking about the consulting firm McKinsey was given the task of calculating exactly what Karyad's many thousands of developers were doing, what cost this was causing, and how these related to the figures that were once planned. So they've had to hire an external company to figure out what the hell is going on with the Karyad software mess. So all of this is a complete disaster. What does this tell us? This tells us exactly what most people already know who are, you know, pay attention to VW. They've got way too many cooks in the kitchen. They've got a bunch of different bosses and this board and the labor groups and, you know, Porsche and Audi and these other companies are kind of quasi independent. So they all depend on each other, but they're all quasi independent and they all have their own agendas and everybody's trying to please themselves and to get what they want and not really paying attention to the bigger picture. Picture. So this is all incredibly disastrous for Volkswagen. So where does this leave us? Like, what is Volkswagen going to do to claw their way out of this mess? I think they have a couple of choices. One is to really, really reduce, to, to like give Dees all the power that he wants, let him do what he wants to do, and leave him alone for a period of time, a year or something, and say, this is what you've got to do. Fire as many people as you want, completely change the Karyad thing, probably throw away version 1.2 of the software and just focus completely on 2.0 and just wait until it comes out, 2026 or something like that. They'll probably be very, very behind by that point, but at least that would give them a chance to catch up and create a modern software package. Will they have the guts to do this? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> like I said, there's way too many cooks in the kitchen. They're never going to allow this to happen. It, this becomes much less like running a business and much more like politics. The VW group appears to be something like that. Choice number two is to go with something like Apple's new CarPlay software and embed that and make that as much part of the ecosystem as possible. At this point, that still doesn't deal with the underlying software that runs the vehicle and autonomous software and things like that. But as I've said in a previous video, and you can check that out, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. I believe that Apple has plans to actually implement autonomous driving in their Apple CarPlay software at some point or in some way. So this could be a reasonable solution for them over time. Will they accept this? More than likely not, because what that means is Porsche and Audi, which are luxury brands, would have the same software. It would look just about exactly the same as mass market VW cars, and they're probably not going to be happy about that, so they won't allow that to happen. And option number three, very sadly, is that Volkswagen goes out of business. 
I, I don't know any other solution besides giving Dees a lot of power and allowing him to cut the fat and try to get things focused or partner up with either Apple or some other software solution that's out there and just pay their you know licensing and royalties and whatever. And maybe they can skunk work something for 2030 in the background while they're doing that. But I think those are the only two viable options for VW to remain legitimate as a competitor in the space in the next four or five years. If they don't do this, they're simply going to go out of business. And that's a really, really a big shame for Germany, for the VW brand, which is very historic, and for everybody who's employed by them. That would be really sad, but I don't see a lot of other options if they either don't partner up with somebody right away or cut a ton of fat and figure out how to make this software go forward and forget about 1.2 and go directly to 2.0. So it's a pretty critical time for VW. You can see their sales globally are really trending downward. They've got really big problems and they need to fix it immediately like yesterday but the problem is I don't think that they have the kind of focus and they don't have a team that's all pointing in the same direction so I don't see it happening and I see VW becoming less and less relevant over the next half of a decade or so and that's really really sad I really wish them all the success in the world but I don't see it happening with this software problems that they have. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking, maybe a little bit depressing. If you did enjoy it, please do like it so other people can find it, and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. You guys sent me these articles, so it was thanks to you that I even knew about a lot of these details, so thank you so much. And of course, if you wanna join the team, check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget, we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.